And uh, uh, verse 1 A certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany of the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. You know, I, I was wondering sometimes why that emphasis. And for me, it goes to show us that, you see, the fact that you, you're giving to the Lord or you're faithful to the Lord and you are committed to God and you have a strong relationship with the Lord, that does not exempt you from crisis. Amen. Being a faithful believer, being a prayer warrior, being a committed Christian does not exempt you from trouble. And so when people say you are going through what you're going through because you have sinned, or you're going through what you're going through because you, you didn't pray well, you're going through what you're going through because you don't have enough faith, that is a lie. And I believe that that is one of the reasons why emphasis was made. They said, this, 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 this people I'm talking about here, they've gone all the way with Jesus. And now their brother is the same one whose brother now lay ill. Verse 3, so the sister sent to him saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus, verse 5, listen to the story. It's, it's a popular story, but I want us to look at it differently this morning. And now Jesus loved Martha and her, and her sister and Lazarus. Emphasis again. He loved them. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. What an irony. He loved them. When you love me, and I sent a message to you and say I'm in trouble, man, leave everything you're doing. Just even don't wear your shoe. Come running. That is how you prove your love to me. Beat the traffic. Get a ticket. So that you will show me that you really care about me. What kind of love will stay back after hearing that the one whom you love is in trouble? What kind of God are you serving? You've been praying and asking him to show up over this situation. And the more you pray. It just kept getting worse. Not getting any better. You are not alone, child of God. Verse 7. Then after this he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. And the disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just seeking to stone you, and you are going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If anyone work in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of the word. But if anyone works in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to our wake him up. The disciples said to him, If he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus has spoken of his death, but they thought he meant taking a rest in sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. For your sake, I am glad that I was not there so that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us go so that we may die with him. Verse 17, When Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother, so when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. If you had shown up where you were supposed to, if you had answered me last year, I wouldn't be in this mess. If you had healed this situation. But verse 22 is where I want to rest my heart this morning. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, he will give you. 
Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said no. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even though he died, yet he will live again. Even now, I know. This morning, I just want to encourage us about the God of the moment. The God of the moment. The God of the moment. The God of the now. The God that is ever present, ever faithful. The one that never leaves you nor forsakes us. The Lord God who is not the God in the distant future, but the God of the here and the now. Even now. We've heard, I, and, and I'm saying this with all of my heart, and I'm believing this, and I've been thinking about it, meditating on it in the last couple of days and weeks, and thinking about the now God, because that is the God that we serve. We, we have stories of what God has done in the past, and what God may do in the years to come, but what about the God of the moment? Martha said, even now I know. Do you know the God of the now? Do you know the God of this moment? Do you know the God that is in the midst of your storm right now? Do you know the God that is holding your hand through the sickness and sorrow? Do you know the God that is standing with you through the trials and tribulation and the temptations of life? Do you know the God of the moment? Martha say, I know, even now. For me personally, this is what I believe. I believe in God's ability to do abundantly, above all that I can ever think or imagine. I believe in a God that can do above and beyond my physical expectation. Because Paul said so to us in the book of Ephesians. Is able to do abundantly above all that you can ever think or imagine according to the power that is at work in us. That power is the power that activates the God of the now. Every day, personally, now, I've always done that, but in the last couple of days, there is a new reason, there's a quietness in my spirit. I wake up with great expectation. And every one of us seated here this morning, the reason why you are in church this morning is because you woke up with expectation. You expect something good to happen. You expect the situation to be better than what it was before you went to bed yesterday night. Expectation becomes the fuel or the gasoline that propels you out of bed every morning. And people who are depressed and hopeless is because they've lost the power of expectation. They no longer, when you stop expecting, you start dying gradually. But in spite for a child of God, the God of the now, I'm saying all that to say that, in spite of the expectation level in me that is so high, in relation to God, I wake up every morning expecting God to show up, expecting God to do something new, expecting God to do something different from what he did yesterday. But my relationship with God is not based on his performance. What do I mean by that? So, if I expect God to heal me today, and I don't get healed today, it doesn't change who God is to me. That do not diminish my faith in Him, my expectation in Him, the integrity of Him, my love for Him does not change because my relationship with Him is not based on His performance. Even though I am filled with expectation, I know the Bible say, hope deferred, make it the heart sick. Joe, uh, Proverbs, that's in, I believe, 12. 
Hope deferred make the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is like a tree of life. So the hope is deferred, but it is not denied. Huh? Hope deferred, not denied. My heart may be sick, but it does not change who God is to me. And so my faithfulness and the faithfulness of God to me is never based on his performance. And this is what Martha and Mary was trying to understand and to play along with Jesus. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But that doesn't change who you are because I know that even though what happened yesterday does not change who you are today. Even now, I know. Because the faithfulness of God is based on the character of God and not on his performance. The three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did the same thing. And they turned around in, Hebrew chapter, uh, in Daniel chapter 3. And they said to the king, and they said, hear this, O king, even if God does not save us, <laughs> our relationship with God has gone beyond his performance. Even if God does not come true for us today, and we get thrown into this fire and we burn, we would rather burn than bow. Because we are not serving God for him to perform. We are serving God based on a revelation of who he is, irregardless of what he does or didn't do. This is where our joy is anchored on something that the world cannot take from us. Right? And they can't take nothing. And so you can't get angry. You can't get me angry and say, Oh, because I, I prayed God didn't give me this. Now I'm angry with God. Because I'm not serving God for him to show up. I'm serving God because he is who he is. And he remains God. Because when you know God by revelation, then the love of God in your heart is not measured by what he does or didn't do. It's measured by the character and the nature of God that you know. Because you know him by revelation. I said all that to say this, that in as much as I expect God to show up, in as much as I expect God to do something, he may not do it. He doesn't change who God is. And the fact that God does not do it today does not stop me from expecting. I don't know. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Is that making any meaning? Right? This is the whole thing. Now I believe that God is with all my heart. I believe in miracles with all my heart. I believe that God can raise the dead with all my heart. But he may not raise the dead today. That does not change who God is. That he did not raise this one today would stop me from believing him for another one to be raised tomorrow. No. Because he's the God of the now. Is that making, am I bringing it together now? He's a God of now. And so he, regardless and irrespective of my disappointment and my back in my relationship with God, I have to keep laying hold of this truth that now is is the God of the now. So it is that knowledge that pumps my faith. You know what the Bible says in the, Hebrew, uh, the book of Hebrews chapter 11? It says, now faith is now. Faith is not tomorrow. Faith is not some distant thing. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. He said by this the elders of old obtained a good report. Understanding that in, in spite of their setback. In spite of their failures. In spite of their disappointment. The why did they obtain a good report? That nothing changes in their heart in relationship to the God of the now. So they were disappointed yesterday, but they woke up this morning with the same hope, 
with the same expectation. They don't stop believing. They don't stop trusting. They don't stop declaring. Like we said in the beginning of the service, Joel, let the weak say. It is, you see, the, 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 the faith of God is not positive thinking. It does not deny the obvious. It is say, don't say you are, you know, to say I'm sick is, to say you are not feeling well is not lack of faith. You're just starting, you're just stating the obvious. But you are not moved by that sickness. Because greater is he that is in you than that which is in the world. Because if you don't tell me what is wrong with you, how can I pray aright? So I want to see God now. I want my faith in God now. I want to believe Him now. I want to expect Him to show up now. Irregardless and irrespective of what happened yesterday. Yes, Lazarus was sick. Yes, Lazarus is now dead. Yes, now Lazarus is buried. But I serve a God of the now. And even now, I know. You see, the things about life that I've noticed is that, you see, promises are great. Right? If I promise you that I'm going to do something for you, what happened? You are excited. You know, promises are great. But promise fulfilled is greater. Amen? <laughs> Promises are wonderful, but fulfilled promise is greater than just making a promise. And so what am I saying? Why did I say that? You see, Martha had a revelation, and I've been thinking about this. And she said, I know, even now, you can do whatever you want to do. And Jesus now turned around on the basis of her faith, and her confession. Jesus said what? Your brother should rise again. And she said, mm, uh, I know you can do now, but this one, this one can happen now. And she said what? Yeah, I know that my brother will rise again in the resurrection. But he just said to me now, that whatever I say now, because I am the God of the now. Martha, didn't you just say to me that I'm the God of the now? Why are you putting off your now to the future? Why are you putting off my visitation that is meant to happen to you now to tomorrow? This is the church of God today. When we are faced with difficulty because of our past negative experience, we now we try to play it safe. Huh? We play it safe. We don't want to be embarrassed. We don't want, you know, and then we go to God, and especially when we want to pray for a difficult situation. And we now begin to pray, God, if it is your will. He said, whatever you ask me according to my will. So before I open my mouth to pray as touching any situation, I need to know first, is it the will of God? If it is the will of God, then I pray according to his will. I'm not going to stand when I'm about to pray for a situation and say, God, if this is your will. No, I already know what the will of God is before I come to him. This is the confidence that we have. That's what the Bible says in John. This is the confidence that we have. That if we ask anything according to his will, we know that we will have that which we will ask of him. Mine is to ask according to his will. His is to do it according to his will. That is left for him. How he does it, I do not know. 
Like the song says, you may not know how, you may not know when, but he will do it again. The God of the mountain is the God of the valley. And so when I go to God of the now, I'm not asking him for his will. I am speaking his will. And I'm declaring his will. It is left for him to perfect it according to his own way. I cannot determine how he answers. That is the difference. This is understanding prayer one-on-one. -on -one. Right? It is the will of God. To heal me. Will I get healed right now? I don't know. But I'm not going to sit here figuring it out. If I pray now, will I get healed or not? I don't know. He didn't ask me to do that. All he asked me was the prayer of faith. Pray. When he decides to make it happen, it's all left to him. Lazarus died. They were expecting him to show up while he was sick. He, did, he decided to show up after he died. Not even after he died a few hours. He died four days and the body now is now at the point of decaying. That's when he decided to show up. The Bible said something at his own time. Not your time. Not my time. In his own time, he makes everything beautiful. He makes it beautiful. I need to depend on the integrity of God when I am relating with him. Not my head knowledge. And so like matter, we have the tendency out of fear to put off. And say, God said, your brother will rise again. She said, I know. He will rise up again in the resurrection. And Jesus said, listen, I love you so much. So I'm not going to let you wallow in this ignorance for too long. And so he, one of the first times that Jesus actually had a discussion with people in a state of unbelief to try to encourage and to motivate them. And he turned around and said, listen, Martha, you just said another thing again. Resurrection. The resurrection matter is not an event. The resurrection matter is not a place. I am the resurrection. <laughs> you say I am the one. It's not some event that is happening in a distant future. The resurrection is standing with you. I am the resurrection. I am the life. And he said, whosoever believeth to me, though he died, yet will he live again. Like, this is what Tosa, A.W. Tosa wrote. He said, the church of God lives in what he called eschatology. Eschatology is a study of the end times. He said the evangelical church and the, you know the new our new church belief system he said it's called is a big word for unbelief eschatology is a theological word for future things the end times i have noticed that eschatology has become a dustbin into which we sweep everything we do not believe <laughs> this is uh, aw Tozer saying so he said everything we don't believe we put it we use you know, religious term, it will happen in the by and by. Right? It's going to happen in the next future. Matthew said, my brother will rise in the resurrection. God is going to give me a new body when I get into heaven. Yes, God is going to do that. God said, I'm going to do all that. But what about now? Why don't you believe me for now? Forget about your disappointment of yesterday. Believe me, wake up every morning believing me for a visitation now. Last week while we were in the camp and I heard that and we were sharing that. I think with Werner and Esther and uh, I think uh, Norm was not there. And the three of us and my heart just began to pant. And I said, I'm tired of telling people's testimony of what God did 10 years ago. Now, Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 2 says, We have heard of your fame 
I stand in awe of your deed. He said, Lord, in my days, make them known. I want to see it now. We believe when we read the Bible, and even the, some pastors had the audacity to stand here <coughs> before God's people and say, oh, uh, uh, the book of Acts is not a literal thing, or those miracles happen in the past. Those things are... Uh, am I right, Pastor Cliff? Uh, Pastor Keith. <laughs> they say that, right? But the same people who say that forget that the Bible says Jesus Christ is what? The same yesterday. It's the same today. It's the same forevermore. That I have not experienced it does not mean it's not happening or it will not happen. Can somebody dare to believe God for now? I'm believing God for now. Jesus said, listen, matter, I am not an event like your pastor will want you to believe. I am not an historical figure like the priest has been preaching about me. I'm not some historical figure I am not. I'm not some theological thesis to be written. I am now. I am the resurrection. Jesus is not some distant future. Jesus is present tense. You see, we believe God can. How many of us believe that God can heal? And, and I want you to now I'm st I want you to bother. how many of you believe that God can heal how many of you believe that God will heal you that, those are two different statements do you understand that I can do something does not mean I will do it huh? I can give you $50 now but will I give you that's a different thing Right? I can't afford $50, so I think I've worth that. But will I give it to you? <laughs> that somebody can does not mean they will. A lot of people know that God can, but they don't believe that He will. So they put everything back in the back burner. God. God can heal that woman, but with me, he's not going to heal me. God can heal cancer, but COVID is a different thing altogether. He is the Lord God, he changes not. Malachi chapter 3, he said, I am the Lord God, I change not. That is why you sons and daughters of Jacob are not consumed. He does not change like shifting shadows. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. He is the same to forevermore. Wherever you go, whether you are in China, whether you are in Africa, whether you are in Europe, whether you are in South America, the same God is Lord over all. We need to start believing him. For something great. I want to say something, just share something as we pray this morning. Just want to encourage you. I, I remember, uh, and, I, I, and I, as I was thinking about the story, and I was saying the same thing to God, and I've been saying it. I said, Lord, I don't want to talk, I don't want to tell people stories of what you did in my life, not even five years ago, not even last week anymore. I want fresh you know like our communion bread that make sure it is baked fresh every morning because the word of God is new every morning fresh every morning Father God I want a testimony for now I don't want a testimony of yesterday I don't want to tell people what God did yesterday I want to tell you what he will do today
David says something in Psalm 37, verse 25. He said, once I was young, now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Neither have I seen their seed beg for bread. That is to say, the consistency of God on changing. He said, I have been young. And now I'm old. I have never seen it happen. I remember when courage was... Esther, can you... How, how, how old was courage then? A, a few months. Was he up to a year? Was he up to a year old? When uh, Ken came to our house. Huh? A few months old. This was in Stockholm. And I want to say this, even though it had to do with provision, as we begin to pray for the God of now. We were going through, courage was a few months old, and we we're going through this hard stuff. As God is my witness. Thank God for internet now. And uh, Mr. Kenneth, may, he's, uh, he's in Sweden, and he may have the opportunity to listen to this story, and he will confirm it. And we had no money. And it was thick winter season. It was snowing that evening. We ran out of baby food for our courage and the diaper. And we don't even have food ourselves. <laughs> the story of our life. That's not the story of my life. Amen. Anyway, <laughs> the story of... And here we were. Honestly. This was around 7 or so in the evening. And I was getting so desperate. I decided, I said, let me go to a, ch uh, 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 a church member who was living about two or three blocks away from where we were living. And there were two houses and a park. And then two houses before his house. When I got to the, and it was snowing when I left the house and I told Esther, I said, let me go to this guy's house and see if I can get some money from him so that I can run to the store before it closes to buy at least the baby food and diaper for the night. As I left the house and I was going, as soon as I got to the park, as God is my witness, I heard in my spirit, so loud and clear, go back home. And I stood there. You see, go back. And this scripture just jumped out of my head or my heart once I was young, now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Neither have I seen their seed beg for bread. Go back home. And I came back home. And Esther said, what happened? And I said, I'm not going again. And I sat down. Not quite 10 minutes. The phone rang. A guy called. And the distance then was over an hour drive from where he was calling where we were in the suburb, Kenneth. And he said, are you at home? Already, I'm hungry. You know, the, the saying that says that a hungry man is an angry man is true, right? My attitude has already changed. And thank God, whatever your situation, try to maintain a godly attitude. Your attitude determines your attitude, right? I was going to get irritated. And are you home? If I'm not home, how will I have answered the phone? You called my house. You know what I mean? That was what came to my mind to respond in anger. <laughs> how can you ask me that kind of funny question? Am I home? If I'm not home, who answered the phone? An angel or a spirit? Right? Because my anger was already boiling, feeling disappointed and angry in my spirit with God. Here I am, baby crying. We're going to go to sleep hungry. And he said, okay, John, can I come to your house now? And I said, where are you calling from? Rinkibi, I'll be Rinkibi, right? And I said, is it not snowing where you are? He said, it's snowing. And you want to come to my house tonight? Okay. He didn't tell me why. And I thought that he was coming maybe for prayer, for counseling. You know, you know how we can get so cocky with ourselves? And I said, come. And an hour or so later, he showed up with boxes of groceries. 
and money for us. The Spirit of God, the God of the now, propelled that man, got him out of his home. He was driving an old Toyota Corolla in the thick of the snowstorm. There was no breakup. He was able to drive to my house over an hour drive and brought all those things because God was trying to show us something that he is the God of now. That is a beautiful story. But the question to me is what happened to that God? Why is that same God not responding to me the same way now? Is it that he has gone on transfer? Like the prophet of Baal's God or something? Or is he asleep now suddenly? Or has he changed location? No. He is the same God. He is still on the throne. But maybe I have stopped expecting. Maybe I have stopped expecting. Maybe I've come to know him too well now in my head that I can figure him out. Maybe I know how to get my problems solved now that I don't really need him anymore. Maybe, maybe I have become so fat theologically that all I do now is to keep expecting him in the distant future. Maybe because I think that I have a credit card, if it is too hard, I will go to the store and use it. So I can't wait long enough. Maybe because I have too many options that does not include him. When I pray, I don't pray a prayer of desperation anymore. Because while I'm praying, I already know what to do. I just pray to fulfill all righteousness. Maybe. Maybe. Shall we all stand up this morning? Maybe. I don't know what your maybe is. But why is God suddenly quiet? And that evening, Hatton, last week we were saying, we are sharing the same story and uh, thank God when things, the Bible says out of the matter two or three, a matter established, and we were sharing that story. And Esther was you know, kind of it's so, it's saying some of those things that, you know, that really touched her because of some of those experiences we had in Sweden. And I'm like, okay, what happened to the God? Is the God of Sweden not the same God of Grand Cash? Is the God of Mary and Martha not the same God that you and I have come to seek this morning? Is it not the same God that told Martha, your brother shall rise again? He didn't say he may rise again. He knew about the resurrection morning. Martha was the one that reminded him of the resurrection morning. You know those theologians and all those new people that say there's nothing like that in the Bible about resurrection and all that. And they don't read the story of John. Because Martha said, I know he will rise again in the resurrection morning. That the trumpet sound. There is a resurrection morning coming. There is a resurrection. Don't let anybody who think they, they are too smart. A lot of Christians these days are smarter than God to their own detriment. 
They know. The Bible didn't say that. The Bible didn't say this. It didn't say this. But Jesus is saying, there is a resurrection morning and there is a resurrection now. There is a resurrection tomorrow and there is a resurrection today. There is a healing for eternity. There is a healing for now. There is a provision for tomorrow. Then there is a provision for today. He says, sufficient for the day is the trouble thereof. Give us our daily bread today. Healing is the children's bread today. I want to challenge you moving forward as we pray. Let your expectation level rises with each rising sun. Do not let the disappointment of yesterday impact your expectation today. Do not allow the failures of yesterday stop you from hoping for today. I wake up now. Thank you for my healing. Wherever I've exalted anything above you, Lord, have mercy on me. Help me to cling to the hem of your garment. The woman with the issue of blood ran and said, if only I would touch the hem of his garment. That was all she knew. Now, is a God that is here right now. What are you going through? What are you dealing with? What are you struggling with? I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care what the diagnosis are with you right now, even with me. What is your now? Even now, I know. I want you to let, let your expectation level rise like never before starting today. That now, not tomorrow, not next year, we're going to take this communion together believing him the freshness of his word the reason why I religiously try to make the bread fresh every day is on the basis of that it's about a faith it's not religion it's not theology but understanding the freshness that the love of God is new every morning Jesus says I am the resurrection and I am the life he said that before he went to the cross do you understand that? He said that before he was nailed to the cross. He said that before he was put in the tomb. He said that before he rose again on the third day. Child of God, we are dealing with something very little here. We are handling something so dangerous casually. Maybe that is why. Maybe we are not desperate enough for a change. Maybe we have not come to the end of our road yet. Maybe because you and I have too many alternatives. We have so many options. When I have options, why do I need God? How can I lay hold of the horn of the author? Jacob prayed. I'm sorry for taking our time a little bit this morning as we pray. You know, Jacob held on to God. He said, if, I, if you don't bless me, I won't let you go. If God does not do it now, it's not going to get done. If God does not help me, no help will come for me. Are you at that point in your life yet? Are you at the point where, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego says, if God does not do it, we will die here, we will get bumped. We're not connected anywhere. This is the last bus stop. We're going to die. If God does not help me, I'm dying. But I die 
I believe him. Over two years ago, we were given that opportunity to demonstrate that to the world. If God does not show up, it will not be done. As we take this communion this morning, I want you to close your eyes. It doesn't matter where you've been to. It doesn't matter what you've gone through. It doesn't matter what you're going through this morning. We are talking about the God of the now. And the good thing about the God of the now is that yesterday is inconsequential when you are dealing with the now God. What you did yesterday may be bad, as bad as they are, but he's here now for a new beginning. It is the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. That is to say, if you have come to the end of your rope, he is there to take you back again to the beginning. He is the end of all roads. Your situation is not the end. Don't let the devil lie to you. What you're going through is not the end. Jesus is waiting for you at the end. When you really get to the end of the rope, you will find Jesus there. And he will start afresh with you. I want you to talk to God right now before we take this communion. I don't know where you are. I don't know what you're dealing with. Martha says, I know now that even now, Lord, the doctors have said there is nothing they can do for me. But Lord, I know even now you can still do something about it. I know my finances are at the point of bankruptcy. But Lord, even now I know you can still change my story. Lord Jesus, my child is going through some terrible lifestyle changes. And they are telling me this is who he is and this is who she is and this is what is going to happen to her. But Lord, I know that even now you can still intervene and you can still bring a change. You can still bring a transformation. I know they are calling him or her an addict. That they are addicted to that substance and there is no way they can be free. Lord, that is what they said but even now you are the God of the now I don't want to base my prognosis upon what they told me yesterday but I'm holding on to the now God now Jesus you can heal me now you can transform my situation now is what I'm talking about let glory rise now on the wings of hope and faith Father God we step out unconventionally this morning. Even as you did, O oh God. You came, O oh God. You said in the word of God. In John chapter 5, O oh God, verse 25, I believe. You say, the time is now. That even the dead shall hear your voice. And those who are dead in the grave will come back to life. You say that time is now. And in John chapter 11, you demonstrated it. You came to the tomb of Lazarus. And your voice echoed through the corridor of the gates of hell and death. And Lazarus was brought back to life. Lord, today, Father Lord, Lord, the Bible said the voice of the blood of Jesus. They speak better things than the blood of Abel. I pray for that God that the voice of the blood of Jesus will take over this communion table today. Lord, let the voice echo through the corridor of the prison house of sickness bringing us out in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever oh God is holding us bound, Heavenly Father God, you showed up irregardless of matters unbelief your mercy took over today Lord let mercy takes over let mercy take over may every dead situation in our life both physically emotionally mentally biologically receive the resurrection power in the name of Jesus the body of Christ broken for you thank you Jesus can you pass it for me thank you Lord you can sit down and take it as we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We're going to pray. You just you take it and hold it. And we're going to pray together and we'll be done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter six, verse two. Courage, can you put that? As you hold in communion today, look at this. For he says, In a favorable time I listen to you. In the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, what does it say next? Can you all say it with me? Behold. Can we say it loud? Can you see what is on the wall? Behold. I want us to say it again together. When? 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 Now. 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 Behold, now is the favorable time. There is no better time than now. There is no better time now for your visitation than now. Now is the day of salvation. Salvation is body, soul, and spirit. Now. Now you can change. Now you can be healed. Now you can be rescued. Now you can be restored. Now you can change your life. Now you can receive hope. Now, not tomorrow. He said, now. He said, in the time for, in the days I listened to you, in the time of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is that day. Father God, Isaiah 10, 27 says, And it shall come to pass also in that day when the yoke shall be destroyed, the burdens on our shoulders lifted because of the anointing. Father God, will sanctify the element in our hand. We stand upon 2 Corinthians 6, 2. We decree by the reason of the mercy seat of heaven. We lay hold of that hope that faileth not. On behalf of Teresa and even on behalf of Samuel Blackmore. Lord, even on behalf of your daughter Louisa. Lord, the Bible said the word, your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces into the bones and the marrow. Any part of your bone and marrow that is out of sick right now that the doctors cannot locate. We decree by the reason of the God of the now. Let the heavens show up. Even right now in that condo where black moths are. Even here right now where Louis is with every sickness in this room right now. For that God we declare by faith that now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of healing. Now is our time of restoration. In the name of Jesus, take the body and the blood of Christ broken and shed for you and for me. May the God of the now that have never lost a battle. May he show up on behalf of your family. May the God of the now that is never late show up for you. May everything that has been pronounced dead in your life, in your home, hear the voice of the resurrection Christ. And may that dead begin to come back to life. Because Jesus said it, and we declare it. He said, a time is coming when they will hear. And that time is now. And so anything that the enemy has written off as a failure in your life, today, by the reason of the voice of the blood, let the God of the now begin to walk in your home in Jesus' name. The Lord bless and keep you. Go with God. Amen. Thank you.